broadcast tonight, Antigua and Barbuda records another COVID-19 death. 53 cases of COVID-19 recorded in 48 hours. Police beef up presence on the street on the first night of extended curfew hours. And a major boost for diplomatic ties with Indonesia as the first ever honorary consul to Antigua and Barbuda is installed. The ABS Evening News begins now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. Welcome to the evening news on ABS and Tigas News Authority. I am Sherilyn Beza. We begin this evening with COVID-19 developments. Sadly, Antigua and Barbuda has recorded the 44th death from COVID-19. A 64-year-old woman died Wednesday morning at the Celeste Bird Medical Center. Medical director at Celeste Bird Medical Center, Dr. Albert Duncan, says the woman had underlying health conditions. He has expressed condolences to the patient's family and loved ones. The previous death from COVID-19 occurred just over a month ago on July 22, when a seven-month-old boy succumbed after having been admitted to the hospital in a critical condition. Meanwhile, active cases of COVID-19 have climbed to 270 following the confirmation of a combined 53 new cases over a two-day period. For 40 of the new cases returned positive Wednesday, 25th August from 155 samples processed at Sir Lester Bird Medical Center. On Thursday, 26, 113 samples produced 13 new cases. The status of the cases, whether imported or non-imported, is yet to be determined by the epidemiological unit. The findings will be published in a subsequent dashboard. 20 of the infected individuals are in hospital, with 16 having mild symptoms, one moderate and three severe. 1,600, that should be 1,651 people have contracted the disease since the start of the pandemic. There are 33,391 fully vaccinated people with 6,918 having received their first dose. In other news, the first night of the revised curfew hours saw a strong police presence to ensure compliance. Our news team witnessed police officers patrolling largely deserted streets shortly after 8 last evening. Police are reporting no breaches or arrests. The curfew hours were revised back to 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. as at Friday, 27th August, for two weeks. Cabinet made the decision on the heels of escalating cases to control the possible spread of the disease. Now, Paul Ryan has been appointed as the first ever honorary consul of the Republic of Indonesia to Antigua and Barbuda. The inauguration ceremony took place on Friday at Antigua Motos on Old Palm Road and was attended by Foreign Affairs Minister Honorable E.P. Chet Green. Our reporter Kim Emanuel Baird was there. In the name of God, I swear. In the name of God, I swear that I will fulfill my duties and obligations and I will fulfill my duties and obligations. As first honorary counsel of the Republic of Indonesia to Antigua and Barbuda, Paul Ryan will work to further strengthen ties between both countries. Paul Ryan thanked the governments of Antigua and Barbuda and Indonesia for his appointment and says both countries have been working on several projects and initiatives that will benefit Antigua and Barbuda. To include training, manufacturing, we've done um, trade forums, and to establish the visa-free access to both countries, both Indonesia and Antigua, both ways. Officially today, thankfully, we are finally able to cross that bridge. So as a result, citizens of both countries have visa-free access to each other's borders. Outgoing ambassador of Indonesia to Antigua and Barbuda, Prio Iswantu, says from this point on, 
Paul Ryan will be representing and promoting the interests of Indonesia to Antigua and Barbuda. Indonesia, one of the largest island countries in the world, with 17,508 islands. On behalf of my president, Joko Widodo, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia, uh, Mrs. Rutno Marsudi, I have the honor to convey to you, Mr. Ryan, their warm congratulations and also our wholehearted congratulations. Minister for Foreign Affairs, the Honorable E.P. Chet Green, says this ceremony should have taken place last year but have been delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The minister says this action is part of the progressive policies the government continues to implement and the appointment of Paul Ryan should come as no surprise. If you go back into his own background and his family background, they have been working with international companies and foreign countries for a long, long, long time. Long standing in the building trade sector. And here we are today in the transport sector. This is Kim Emanuel Baird reporting for ABS News. Thank you, Kim. Now the closure of the Antigua and Barbuda Civil Registry is once again being extended. The civil registry will remain closed for the week of August 30 to September 3. The registry says that the extension of the closure is ne necessary as work continues to upgrade the software. It also assures effort is being made to complete the upgrade as soon as possible. The customer service window will be open from 8.30 a.m. to noon to facilitate emergencies and filings within the deeds division during this period. For more information, please call 562-9687 or 562-9688. That item brings us to the end of our national news segment. Sports is up next. Patriots fire 2-0 and o in Caribbean Premier League. Jack Matthew joins us with this and other sporting developments after the break. Stay tuned. At Najico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like knowing you're covered when your house gets flooded. Getting your settlements quickly and fairly when a fire hits your home. And making sure your business can keep going, even after an accident happens on site. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. This Sunday at 8 p.m., ABS provides another major update on the virus and variants. With new COVID-19 infections on the rise and the dreaded Delta variant on the prowl, we speak with Dr. Lester Simon about all you need to know. A COVID special, 8 p.m. Sunday, in all ABS platforms will be another massive media event. We go inside the world of microbes with Dr. Simon, who is the head of the laboratory of the Celeste Bird Medical Center. Join us. Seeing is experiential. Seeing is everyday life. Seeing is style, class, and sheer sophistication. At iMobile Vision Care, we offer state-of-the-art lab technology and the widest variety of quality eyewear from the biggest brands to suit your lifestyle. Stop by our offices at Dr. Rosalie Drive Lower Gambles to get a comprehensive digital eye exam or call us at 562-7823 and ask about our optical care services. Mobile Vision Care. See and be seen. We're outside with Automotive Art. Automotive Art is giving you the chance to stay at Buccaneer Beach Club or win a car spa package from Island View Car Wash with exclusive discounts from 15 to 50% off to special service packages including your tires, batteries, oils, and tools. It's so easy to enter our raffle when you spend $250 or more. Visit Automotive Art on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube and win big this summer with Automotive Art. This promotion ends September 4th. This sports report is brought to you by Total Imports. It's not easy getting rid of these types of greases every day. It's hard work, but if you really think about it, it's not really us doing the cleaning. 
At Total Import Supplies, we believe it's all about the product. Our extensive new line of ChemClean products are extremely concentrated, eco-friendly, effective, and guaranteed to make your life a whole lot easier. Whether you're cleaning at home, the office, or at industrial type spaces, when it comes to food-based solvents, sanitizers, cleaners, floor care, commercial machines, and dispensers for laundry care, let the product do most of the work for you. Introducing the best brands in the cleaning business from ChemClean Limited. Available only from Total Import Supplies. We're keeping track of the latest sporting developments. Good evening to everyone. I'm Jack Matthew. We begin with cricket and propelled by a century stand. St. Kitts and Davis Patriots made it 2-0 in the Hero Caribbean Premier League today. Openers Evan Lewis and Devon Thomas posted 113 to lay the basis for an eight-wicket trouncing of Guyana Amazon Warriors with seven balls remaining. Lewis hammered five sixes and four fours in 62. And man of the match Thomas cracked an undefeated 55 with seven boundaries and one maximum. Warriors 146 for eight. Dominic Drake's three for 26. Patriots 147 for two. In related news with Captain Kyron Pollard in full flight, Trinbago Knight Riders bounced back swiftly in their Hero Caribbean Premier League campaign. More in this report. Pollard led a recovery and eased the defending champions to a six-wicket trouncing of Barbados Royals at Warner Park on Friday night. The Windy's white ball skipper plundered an unbeaten 58 of only 30 deliveries as Knight Riders hit back from their initial defeat. In helping to overhaul a total of 122, Pollard pummeled six sixes and three fours in his 55th T2050. After danger surfaced at 38 for 4 in the 8th over, the right-hander figured in an unbroken stand of 87 with Dinesh Ramdin, who made 29 not out. Knight Riders got home at 125 for 4 with 3.1 overs to spare. They were also indebted to pacer Izuru Yodana, whose career best 5 for 21 dismantled the Royals batting for 122. The skillful pacer Mohamed Amir then created a scare in the cup holders' pursuit by grabbing three victims before Pollard and Ramdin came to the rescue. Jack Matthew, ABS Sports. Also, Barbados Royals, after two losses, overcame Jamaica Tallowards by 15 runs. Royals 161 for 5, Glenn Phillips 56 not out, Tallowards 146 for 9, Shamar Brooks 47, Raymond Reefer 3 for 31. More cricket, the expectations of assistant coach Sir Kretley Ambrose are that the West Indies under-19 cricketers will deliver on their ODI tour of England. Ambrose, conqueror of 405 test wickets, believes the combination will benefit from the exposure and reap success. I like what I'm seeing. We've got some wonderful batsmen, some good bowlers in terms of the fast bowling department and some wonderful spinners as well. So we have a good combination. I honestly believe we're going to do very well over in England. We are going to play six games and this is preparation for the Under-19 World Cup coming up early in January 2022. The contingent of 25, including 18 players, left here this afternoon for London. And talking about uh, London, it's won all in the five-match test series between England and India. In Game 3 at Headingley, England swept to an innings and 76-run victory with a day and two sessions to spare. Resuming at 215 for two, India fell for 278, eight wickets tumbling for 63 runs, including Chiteshwa Pujara for 91 and Virat Kohli for 55. Pacer Ollie Robinson bagged 5 for 65. We now go to the track, and the brilliance of double Olympic champion Elaine Thompson Hera continued at the Diamond League meeting in Paris today. But disappointment for CJ Green. Here's more. A week after stunning the world with 10.54 at the Eugene Diamond League, Thompson Hera raced to glory in consummate fashion in the 100 meters. The Jamaican clocked a meet record of 10.72 seconds in beating compatriot Sharika Jackson and Britain's Dina Asher Smith. Shelley and Fraser Price was missing due to fatigue. Another Jamaican, Olympic champion Hansel Parchment, bounced back from losing in Switzerland by winning with the season's best. Parchment ran 13.03 in the men's 110 hurdles. In the men's 100 meters, Antigua and CJ Green finished a disappointing seventh in 10.26. American Marvin Bracey prevailed in 10.04, followed by Jamaican Nigel Ellis in 10.14. Over a longer distance, Seda Williams of Barbados was second in the women's 400, clocking 50.3 naught. Another Caribbean athlete, Anderson Peters of Grenada, excelled in the javelin by producing a throw of 85.98. Joy two for Armand Duplantis of Sweden, 
In the pole vault, the plant is scaled a height of 6.01 meters, a meat record. Jack Matthew, ABS Sports. And finally, football and cup holders Manchester City were ruthless in the English Premier League. City hammered Arsenal 5-0 with Torres netting a brace. Also, Everton blanked Brighton 2-0 and Leicester beat Norwich by two goals to one. But Liverpool and Chelsea fought to a one-all draw. That's a wrap on sports. It's back over to Shirley. Thank you, Jack. When we return, we take a look at regional developments and farther afield. Stay tuned.